Like the current consoles from both Microsoft and Sony, the Xbox Series X, which will apparently merely be called the Xbox upon launch, Microsoft wildly tempting the same consumer idiot confusion that Nintendo smashed against pathetically when it launched the Wii U to general confusion and bafflement, the 2020 Xbox will be running on top of a customized AMD SoC, which, if you didn't realize, stands for System on a Chip, which is just a shorthand way to describe, in this context, the CPU cores and the GPU cores living on the same physical chip instead of being separate like they are in, say, a PC, for example. In fact, AMD already make these combination chips in the PC world. They call them APUs, or Accelerated Processing Units, the current generation of which includes the Ryzen 5 3400G, which I have personally built a system around for a review and have been pretty impressed with, actually. That SOC, or APU, runs on AMD's 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture, while the new Xbox 2020 will hum along on the newer and current gen 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture. The announced specs reveal this Zen 2 based CPU will have 8 cores, 16 threads. There is a handful of AMD CPUs currently available that match that basic spec. The most commonly seen one is the super popular Ryzen 7 3700X, considered by many to be the absolute best gaming PC CPU out there. Unfortunately for me, that is one of the Ryzen chips I have not actually tested myself. But I hear good things. I have, however, built systems and reviewed the Ryzen 9 3900X, its big brother, and it is crazy powerful. The 3700X is very fast and power efficient with a TDP of a mere 65 watts and has been wildly popular amongst PC gaming enthusiasts. It wouldn't be a stretch to guess that the CPU in the new Xbox will be a customized variant of this basic hardware. It certainly matches the specs as far as core count and architecture go. The Ryzen 5 3400G APU I mentioned before, being one of these APUs, has a GPU based on the Vega architecture, they call it the Vega 11. And that combination of Ryzen 5 and Vega chipsets allows you to, as I did, build a gaming PC even teeny tinier than a console but still capable of decent 1080p gaming. If you just need proof, I'll link the review video in the down below. In the new Xbox, the Xbox 2020 as I've been calling it, to save us on a little bit of confusion, meanwhile the Navi part of the specs reveal refers to the code name for the newer GPU architecture that first saw light of day out of AMD earlier this year in July 2019. As I'm writing this, there's four commercially available consumer grade GPUs supporting this silicon. The Radeon's RX 5500, 5500 XT, 5700 and 5700 XT, and technically, if you want to get real anal about it, the RX 5700 XT Anniversary Edition, which is a slightly upgraded version of, you guessed it, the 5700 XT. So call it five different variants of this architecture out there at the moment. These Radeon RX 5000 series cards are based on AMD's new RDNA architecture, which in my experience is doing them a lot of favors. And with these series of cards, they're targeting the middle mainstream to high-end gaming PC users. In real world useful terms, it means they're marketing these to users who are moving past 1080p, AAA gaming, and want to hit up 1440p and even 4K PC gaming. My hopeful guess would be for the Xbox 2020, the SoC variant they're using for the Xbox 2020 would be on par with the basic RX 5700, which again, I have reviewed myself and which I actually currently use to power my VR system. In a Windows PC, this GPU does a damn fine job of high-end 1440p gaming and can stretch to 4K with some settings compromises. In a console, where developers have the luxury of being able to much more finely optimize their code to a single hardware target rather than the vast open wild west wasteland that is the glory of the PC gaming master race, and of course without the burden of Windows 10, as gaming PC enthusiasts have to put up with, on a console you have way less overhead as well, so you can do more with lesser hardware. Which, in more practical terms and more practical hopes, will likely mean the Xbox 2020 will be something closer in spec to an RX 5500, hardware currently marketed as a 1080p card for PC gamers, but again, in a closed ecosystem, in a console that allows for less overhead and more optimization, could still mean a 4K60 target is not unreasonable. And it is fun to imagine a combination of the Ryzen 7 3700X and RX 5700 jammed into a customized silicon on a chip and the delights of what that could mean in being able to deliver the kinds of gobsmacking 4K 60fps console quality gaming that Microsoft are promising with their earliest marketing out of the Game Awards show. 
It will, of course, include ray tracing, which surprises some. Uh, there are people out there who literally believe NVIDIA just invented ray tracing last year because of all their marketing surrounding their RTX cards. I'm here to tell you NVIDIA did not invent ray tracing. Their cards, the important thing about their cards is just that they do ray tracing hardware accelerated. The ray tracing has been in use in the entertainment industry for decades now, and you can, in fact, do it perfectly well without accelerated hardware. It just works better with accelerated hardware, like the RTX cards. For proof on that, I'll link to another video about Minecraft ray tracing done on CPU in the down below area. Back on the AMD side of the fence, current rumors have circulated that thanks to references to DirectX ray tracing being found in the latest AMD drivers, that indicates AMD could very well be enabling ray tracing support for their current line of RX 5000 series Navi GPUs in a future software update. Presumably once they've nailed down all the last loose boards. AMD's architecture also already fully supports the other flagship features that have been revealed for the Series X so far, like variable refresh rate, variable rate shading, dynamic low latency adaptability, and all that kind of stuff. All of that already exists on the PC variants of these hardware. However, the Radeon 5700 alone does currently sell for more than an entire Xbox One X. The same is true of the 3700X CPU on its lonesome as well. We are, of course, talking current pricing for new PC hardware versus customized console variants about a year and a half old by the time the Xbox Series X actually launches. So that can help bring prices down, of course. And of course, these are just wide guesses based on the limited surface level specs we've been told about so far. Microsoft say it has four times the power of the Xbox One X. And depending on how they're measuring it, it may be completely meaningless to say it's four times more powerful. That may be a very specific use case or something. I'd feel pretty safe in just ignoring that claim, that four times more power name, at least for now. So what does all this mean in the end, though? Well, it means the new Xbox will likely be two things. Very powerful, doy, and likely more expensive on day one than the previous consoles were. It feels like both Sony and Microsoft are going with far fewer compromises this time around to make sure they can squeeze as much life from the next generation as they possibly can. Because while the current generation of consoles too run on custom versions of AMD's CPU and GPU architecture, when they were launched it was a very different landscape for AMD who lagged a long way behind Intel. These days, under the Zen 2 silicon, it's a completely different story. AMD are stomping Team Blue a little bit and uh, Intel, well, that they don't take that kind of thing easily. <laughs> we'll see what happens. While on the GPU side of things, Nvidia do still outclass AMD punch for punch. AMD have made significant strides in closing the gap, but Team Green still do win by most measures. Certainly with how many cards they're actually selling. It's going to be an interesting year ahead as we learn more and more about the Series X and indeed the PlayStation 5 and see more and more game reveals and hopefully more and more actual gameplay instead of this or in-engine rendered. Yeah, all right, that's meaningless. I've left a space below for your hopes and your dreams and your cynical doubts and your claims that this will either kill or be killed by Sony's PlayStation 5 and wild slashes into the void about what Nintendo might be doing next and if we'll ever see a Switch Pro or whatever. People have been claiming it's on its way since literally the entirety of the Switch's public life. Are we ever going to see a Switch Pro? What is it going to be? Who knows? But what do you reckon? Like I said, I, I, I'm pretty excited about what may be. It's always fun when a new console generation is looming. So many rumors, so many guesses, so many expectations, so many letdowns, frankly, but also launch games. It's always exciting to find out about the launch games. Thanks for watching. I am Blotty, and we'll catch you next time.